I'm not joking, I will never go on a cruise because of this story. In 1998, 23-year-old Amy Lynn Bradley decided to tag along on her family's trip on a cruise. The boat was called Rhapsody of the Seas and it was one of those huge cruise ships and it was supposed to sail through the Caribbean around Aruba and Curacao. Amy never came back from this cruise, and I know you might say, how could you go missing on a cruise ship? Well, she did, and there's a lot of shady stuff that happened before as well as after her disappearance. So the night before she went missing, the family got dinner together, and then she and her brother went out dancing. This is a video filmed by the cruise, and Amy started dancing with a member of the cruise's band named Yellow. They were all having a lot of fun and Amy and her mom wanted to get some of these photos that the cruise's hired photographer had been walking around and taking. But when they went to the photo pickup area, all the photos of Amy were already gone, like somebody had already purchased them. Amy was last seen around 6 a.m. when she told her dad that she was gonna go smoke a cigarette. Her dad reported her missing a few hours later. Now, one of the reasons I find cruises so creepy is that they don't really have any like authority beyond the captain. There was no police that Amy's disappearance could be reported to. All they could do was ask the captain to make an announcement over the intercom, which he refused to do because it was too early in the morning. He did agree to do it a few hours later though, and they also asked him if he could avoid docking until they located Amy, because once they docked and let everybody off the ship, finding her would be so much harder. One really creepy fact is that Yellow, that band guy she was dancing with, walked up to her brother Brad and said, Hey man, I'm sorry to hear about your sister. Even though this hadn't been announced publicly yet, it was basically just known within like Amy's family and then like the captain that they just spoken to. The ship did dock and people got out and Amy's family found out that they actually hadn't searched the ship for her. They had only searched the common areas and she could have easily been in somebody's room. Then there are the sightings. In August 1998, a man said that he saw Amy walking with two other men, but then they grabbed her when she tried to run towards him. Then in 2005, a woman came forward saying she was in a department store bathroom in Barbados. When a woman and a man came in, the man yelled at the woman and then he walked away and she walked out and Amy Lynn Bradley was standing right there. She asked her name and she said it was Amy, but then the men came back in and grabbed her. A Navy officer also said that he was at a brothel in Curacao and the woman he was with said that her name was Amy and that they wouldn't let her leave. Adding to this is the fact that this photo was found on an escort website for the Caribbean. She looks a lot like Amy. She has the same rosy cheekbones, the nose is similar, her lips are similar, as well as her chin. It's really possible that some of the employees on this cruise line were scouting Amy to be sold into a sex ring. Investigations that require multiple countries to participate are always difficult and Amy's case is currently unsolved and she has not been located. Amy Lynn Bradley, a young American woman, vanished under the most puzzling circumstances. It was the early morning of March 24, 1998. At that time, Amy was just 23 years old, in the prime of her life, with her whole future ahead of her. She was aboard a Caribbean cruise ship, a setting that was supposed to be a paradise, a place of relaxation and enjoyment. But for Amy, it turned into a nightmarish abyss. The night before her disappearance was just like any other. She was seen laughing, dancing, and enjoying the cruise ship's vibrant nightlife. There was no indication, no sign, that something so sinister was about to happen. As the night grew late, she retreated to her cabin, shared with her brother. He was the last person to see her, around 5.30 in the morning. Amy was seen by her brother on the balcony of their cabin, evidently unable to sleep. They shared a few words before he drifted back to sleep, with Amy still on the balcony. The ship was gliding through the Caribbean Sea, under the cloak of darkness, with only the sound of the waves to break the silence. It was a peaceful scene, a stark contrast to the turmoil that was about to unfold. When the sun rose, the ship was alive with the sounds and sights of vacationers ready to start another day of fun and relaxation. But for one family, the day would bring nothing but anxiety and despair. Amy's father woke up later that morning expecting to find his daughter in their shared cabin, but Amy was gone. The cabin was empty, her belongings untouched. Her shoes were still there, placed neatly by the bed, indicating that she hadn't planned on going anywhere. The door to the balcony was left ajar, letting in the cool morning breeze. But Amy, Amy was nowhere to be found. The ship was searched, announcements were made, but Amy Lynn Bradley had disappeared into thin air. When her father woke later that morning, Amy was nowhere to be found. As the ship continued its course, 
a frantic search for Amy was underway. The ship's crew, alerted to Amy's sudden and inexplicable disappearance, immediately sprang into action. From cabins to engine rooms, every nook and cranny of the colossal cruise liner was scoured in a desperate bid to find any trace of the missing passenger. The crew, unaccustomed to such a baffling mystery, were left scratching their heads. Amy was nowhere to be found, yet the ship sailed on. It was a race against time, but the vessel was on a schedule, a rigid itinerary that couldn't be disrupted. The initial search efforts, while thorough, turned up nothing. Amy had vanished, leaving no clue behind. Alarmingly, it took several hours for local authorities to be notified of her disappearance. A critical period for any missing person case, these first few hours lost to the vast ocean could have held vital clues, potential leads. The delay in reporting Amy's disappearance to the authorities was a considerable setback in the investigation. The implications of this delay were far-reaching. The vastness of the ocean, the countless ports of call, the sheer number of passengers on the ship. All these factors made the investigation akin to finding a needle in a haystack. The ship, a floating city in itself, offered countless hiding spots, and every passing hour only served to widen the search radius. As the authorities finally came on board, they were met with a daunting task. The ship had already docked at several ports, and thousands of passengers had disembarked, potentially carrying with them vital information, or worse, the missing Amy herself. The initial investigation was a whirlwind of interviews, searches, and growing despair. The crew members, the passengers, everyone was questioned, but all to no avail. No one had seen Amy, no one knew anything. The investigation hit a brick wall. With no trace of Amy on board, the question remained, where could she have gone? As the ship sailed into the horizon, the mystery of Amy Lynn Bradley's disappearance deepened and the investigation had only just begun. Over time, there have been numerous alleged sightings of Amy. These moments of potential recognition have been a beacon of hope, a possibility that Amy might still be alive, somewhere out there. One of the most compelling accounts came from an American sailor who claimed to have encountered Amy in a brothel on the island of Curaçao. He said that she had told him her name was Amy Bradley and that she needed help. But before any action could be taken, she was whisked away, vanishing once more into the shadows. Then there was the sighting by a Canadian tourist also in Curaçao. This tourist reported seeing a woman matching Amy's description on a beach. The woman had tattoos similar to Amy's. A Tasmanian devil spinning a basketball on her shoulder, a sun on her lower back, a Chinese symbol on her right ankle, and a gecko lizard on her navel. And let's not forget the account of a member of the Navy who said he saw Amy in a high-end brothel. He claimed that Amy told him she was not allowed to leave, a prisoner in a gilded cage. Across the years there have been other sightings too. Some have come from far-flung corners of the Caribbean, others from places closer to home. Each account is tantalizing, suggesting that Amy could still be alive, that she could still be out there waiting for someone to find her. But despite these sightings, despite the tantalizing clues and the desperate searches, Amy's whereabouts remain unknown. The leads have gone cold, the trails have gone quiet. The hopeful sightings, as promising as they have been, have led to dead ends, each one a crushing defeat. And so the search continues. The hope persists. Because for those who love Amy, for those who remember her, these sightings are more than just potential leads. They are reminders that Amy is still missing, that her story is not yet over, that somewhere out there, she might be waiting to be found. Each sighting brought a glimmer of hope, but Amy's whereabouts remained a mystery. Years after Amy's disappearance, a chilling discovery was made. The silence that had stretched over the years since Amy vanished was finally broken, not with a sound, but with a sight. A sight that would send shivers down anyone's spine. Photos began to emerge from the depths of the internet, Photos that appeared to show Amy, alive, but not as we knew her. The bright, vivacious young woman who had been on a cruise with her family was nowhere to be found in these images. Instead, there was a woman who bore a striking resemblance to Amy but seemed broken, subdued, a mere shadow of her former self. The emergence of these photos compelled us to consider a horrifying possibility. Could Amy have become a victim of human trafficking? It's a question no one wants to ask, but one that, under the circumstances, we couldn't ignore. The photos suggested that Amy wasn't just missing, she was being held captive, living a life that was a stark contrast to the one she had known. 
These photos did not come with a location, a name, or any form of identification. They were dropped into the digital world like a stone in a pond, creating ripples but providing no clear direction. They were a distressing enigma, a puzzle with pieces that didn't quite fit together. The investigation took a new turn with the emergence of these photos. They provided a glimmer of hope that Amy was still alive. Yet they also opened up a Pandora's box of dreadful possibilities. They were a double-edged sword providing hope and despair in equal measure. Human trafficking is a dark underbelly of our society, a monstrous industry that thrives in the shadows. The photos suggested that Amy might have been swallowed by this darkness, forced into a life that is a living nightmare. The photos were a horrifying clue, yet they offered no concrete answers. They were a chilling reminder of Amy's unresolved fate, a haunting echo of a life interrupted, a story that was still unfolding, still waiting for its final chapter. Throughout this ordeal, Amy's family has never given up hope. Despite the chilling turn of events, they have remained steadfast in their pursuit to find Amy, their beloved daughter and sister. The Bradley family, a picture of resilience and unwavering determination, has gone to extraordinary lengths in their quest for justice. They have relentlessly pushed the boundaries, refusing to let their daughter's story fade into oblivion. They've enlisted the help of private investigators, tirelessly combing through every shred of evidence, every possible lead. They've braved the dark underbelly of the unknown, navigating a labyrinth of uncertainty, hoping against hope to uncover a trail that would lead them to Amy. In a testament to their undying hope, the Bradleys even put forth a substantial reward, an open invitation to anyone who could provide information that would aid in their search. This wasn't just about money. It was a desperate plea, a beacon of hope in a sea of despair, a call to the world to join them in their quest to find Amy. Yet, each day brought with it a fresh wave of disappointment. Every lead, every promising tip seemed to vanish into thin air, leaving them back at square one. The family's resolve, however, remained unbroken. They continued their search, their spirits fueled by the love they held for Amy. But as the days turned into months and months into years, the Bradleys were met with a harsh reality. Despite their tireless efforts, despite their relentless pursuit, Amy remained lost. Each unanswered question, each dead end, each false lead only served to amplify their anguish, their frustration. The Bradleys, however, refused to let despair take hold. They remained undeterred, their resolve only strengthened by the adversity they faced. Their fight for Amy continues, a testament to their unyielding love and unwavering hope. Despite their tireless search, Amy's family is still left with more questions than answers, but in the face of uncertainty they continue to hope, to search, to fight, for Amy, for justice, for closure. Amy's case remains one of the most baffling disappearances. It's a tale that keeps you up at night, wondering about the countless possibilities. As we delve deeper into the unknown, a myriad of theories have surfaced, each more perplexing than the last. Some suggest that Amy may still be alive. It's a chilling thought, but one that has been fueled by the numerous alleged sightings over the years. Could it be that Amy was taken against her will, forced into a life far from the comfort of her home and family? Or perhaps she fell into the hands of an underground network, her identity concealed from the world. This theory, while terrifying, is not unheard of, and the potential reality of it makes Amy's story all the more haunting. Others propose that Amy might have chosen this path herself, Maybe she decided to disappear, to start anew, away from the prying eyes of the world. It's an idea that is difficult to fathom, knowing Amy's close-knit relationship with her family. But the lack of concrete evidence leaves us grappling with the uncertainty. Then there are those who believe that the ship's crew might have been involved in some way. Could it be that they knew more than they let on? That they played a role in Amy's disappearance? Or is this just another case of people looking for someone to blame when answers are scarce? These theories, as unsettling as they are, serve as a stark reminder of the unknown. They underline the harsh reality that sometimes, despite our best efforts, the truth eludes us. They highlight the fragility of life and the dangers that can lurk in the most unexpected of places. Each theory brings with it a new set of questions further muddying the waters of this enigma, the lack of closure, the unanswered questions, it's a burden that Amy's family continues to bear, a wound that time has failed to heal. Amy's story is a chilling reminder of the unknown dangers that lurk even in the most unexpected places. As we continue our search for answers, 
we hold on to the hope that one day, the truth will surface. Amy Bradley's story is far from over. The echoes of her name resonate through the hallways of time, a haunting reminder of the mystery that still lingers over her disappearance. And yet, even in the face of uncertainty, the pursuit of truth is relentless. The search for Amy continues, a beacon of hope that refuses to be extinguished. In the years since Amy's disappearance, her family, friends, and countless strangers have joined forces in an international effort to locate her. These tireless crusaders are driven by a shared conviction that Amy is still out there, somewhere waiting to be found. They sift through countless leads, comb through endless data, and traverse the world, all in the hope of uncovering the truth. Law enforcement agencies, private investigators, and even ordinary citizens have rallied to this cause, dedicating their time, resources, and hearts to the mission. They've dispersed flyers, launched campaigns on social media, and offered rewards for information. Every potential lead, no matter how small, is pursued with fervor. Every stone unturned, every avenue explored, in the hope that one day, Amy will be found. Yet the plea for help is not limited to those directly involved in the search. It extends to you, to me, to anyone who may hold the key to unlocking this mystery. If you were there, if you saw something, if you know something, your voice matters. Your information could be the missing piece in this vast, intricate puzzle. The hope persists, fueled by the belief that every mystery can be solved, every question answered. The people who love Amy, who miss her, who long for her return, they will not stop. They will not give in to despair. They will continue to fight, to search, to hope. So remember Amy, remember her story. And if you can, help write its ending. Someone somewhere knows something. And that something could bring Amy home. Thirsty for more mysteries? Check out this video right here that's about the legendary real-life ghost ship called the Mary Celeste. One of the creepiest mysteries to ever happen.